You know, as I was putting this video together, I was already thinking like there is bound to be some guys who will say like, yeah, just just fap or uh, or just do some drugs or something like that. Well, I'm going to tell you now that no, you don't need to be doing such uh, crazy, outrageous things to uh, calm the nerves before you're going to go on a date. Uh, although they probably do help, but I'm not going to encourage those sort of things for you to be doing. Um, but I'm going to go over five things that you can do um, that is going to help you with the uh, the nerves uh, prior to a date. Because let's face it, most guys, uh, especially if they have been out of the dating scene for a while, or if they're going on a date with someone that they really do like, um, they're going to be nervous, they're going to be anxious, and they also don't want to ruin any opportunities with their date as well. So the first thing that I would say that you can do is to uh, to simply meditate. Just taking a moment for yourself to just sit and relax and just allow yourself to uh, to calm down as well is going to be a really, really good thing for you. So what does tend to happen when the adrenaline is pumping in your body, um, your body's also going to be releasing cortisol. And when the cortisol is actually flowing, especially through your brain, it goes to areas that that's going to affect you from thinking and acting appropriately. And by that, I mean being able to have a conversation with someone. So maybe if you are someone who has done a lot of stuff like street approaching, or maybe you have gone on dates before where you have been nervous of the girl that you're talking to, and suddenly your brain just goes completely flat. You have no idea what you want to say. Uh, well, that's usually because, uh, well, it will either be because of cortisol flowing through your brain, getting in the way of allowing those neurons to uh, connect ideas together, or perhaps maybe you just haven't really uh, uh, thought about something enough to really ask appropriate questions. You, you need to work on your conversation skills. But with something like meditation, whether that be doing something like the Wim Hof method um, or just sitting there and, you know, like very closing your eyes and um, doing a lot of mindfulness exercises, um, this can be really good to um, just get you to relax yourself, bring that focus back to the present rather than potentially even also thinking about the future. And we certainly get quite anxious thinking about um, the future with things, as well as maybe even things that have happened to us in the past that we use as reference experience for how the possible future date is going to go. So don't be alarmed with um, with trying to predict something in the future. I mean, it hasn't happened yet, but bringing yourself back to the present by doing something like mindfulness is a great tool to use. Uh, of course, doing something like the eye movement therapy as well can help remove past experiences or how you feel about past experiences. That also can influence how you feel about something in the present. So if you're about to go on a date and maybe in the past you've had really bad date experiences, which makes you hesitant about going on a date, then there's also this option to change that feeling. And then you might not be so scared or anxious uh, about uh, the person that you're going to meet and hopefully be flirting with and talking to. So first one, meditate take the opportunity at some point before the date to just sit, close your eyes and allow yourself to be present. Or if you do feel that there are some more serious underlying traumas uh, or you've got plenty of really bad experiences uh, that certainly play on your mind every time you're about to go on a date, then something like the eye movement therapy is a great tool to, uh, to change that scenario for you. Uh, the second thing which everyone kind of does, but they do make a little bit of a mistake with is certainly when you're listening to music. Um, I've known plenty of guys who, when it comes to listening to music, they tend to really, they tend to listen to more upbeat, motivational, like, like energetic sort of stuff. But that's great if you're, you know, about to maybe run for a marathon or you're about to do something really energetic. 
what you want to be doing, what you want to be doing, stumbling on my words here, is listening to something that is a lot more relaxing, a lot more soothing, something that is going to be more calming for the body and perhaps maybe something that's got a bit more of a uh, a rhythm to it, a nice sort of like slow pace that causes your breathing to also match it as you're listening to it. Um, and uh, there are plenty of videos um, and audios that you can listen to on YouTube and just find something that works for you. But just something that's calming, again, that brings that cortisol level down and gets you also into a much more relaxed state. So once you are on that day, you're not going to be like oh super pumped and stuff. You're going to be like really chilled and uh, and cool and hopefully collected um, once you're you're meeting your day. Um, the third one, which is something actually I quite like doing, is uh, watching some something funny or watching some funny videos. Uh, so a very easy way to overcome any kind of cortisol or adrenaline in the body to certainly calm you down is turn that anxiety or turn that fear into laughter and something funny. So I can't recall who the scientist was, but there is an experiment. I'll have to do a video on this. I'll, I'll find out who, who the person is. But I do remember there was an experiment done where by getting someone to who, who was going through a very fearful moment, um, they were told to basically say out loud like uh, that they are excited, that they are looking forward to doing it and basically just giving themselves much more uh, positive affirmations to, um, uh, to, to change this emotion that they was going through. And lo and behold, that is what happened. So I haven't included in this list uh, the affirmations because in a way I kind of see it as part of the... Uh, the watching something funny. If you're going through watching something that has a very different emotion to what you're feeling right now, you can slowly cause the body to transition into a very different emotion. So rather than if you were maybe watching like a scary movie, you're going to kind of encourage that fearfulness and the phobias or the anxiety within you. But if you're watching something comical or something entertaining, something that's going to make you laugh, then that's going to have a very different reaction on you as well. So consider, especially if you're on your way to a date, maybe you have a look on YouTube or have a look at something on your phone that is going to make you laugh, um, that is going to get you giggling and smiling and stuff. That's only going to just shift that emotion very uh, naturally into a much more positive state that you want to be working with on your dates. The next one, number four, which I kind of alluded to with the meditation. I kind of did the old Freudian slip there, but with deep breaths, that can make all the difference as well. When we get really stressed, our breathing tends to be a little bit more erratic than normal. Uh, or what can also happen is you might not end up breathing properly. Sometimes we end up holding our breath a little bit more and then that causes us to sort of mumble and stumble on our words. So what I want you to consider is maybe when you're on your way to the day, take some deep breaths, pace your breathing, taking like four, uh, four seconds breathing in and then four seconds breathing out can be all you need to shift again how the body is reacting to those uh, those fears or those nerves that are kicking in. So it would look something like this as you're walking. So that might look a little bit ridiculous on camera, especially with me just holding eye contact and not really doing anything else except for just breathing. But I can assure you, even something as simple as that can make all the difference. Uh, some people do also like five or six seconds in between. Sometimes they vary it up a little bit, but just having a long, deep breath and then a long exhale 
can be all you need if you end up doing that just a couple of times, just to calm yourself down. Um, and especially in combination with the, uh, uh, the bringing your presence back, it's, it's amazing how very quickly and easily you can get rid of that anxiety. And the last one, which maybe you probably wouldn't be expecting, but just plan and prep your evening. Um, obviously, you can never really know what is going to happen on your dates. You know, there will always be this element of adventure and spontaneity there. But what you can do is make sure it goes as smooth as it possibly can. So, for example, if you've arranged your date with someone to go to a bar, but you've never been to that bar before, you might feel the anxiety because you don't know what to expect the moment you get there. You don't know what the drink selection is like. You also don't know what the price is like. You also don't know what the seating is like, what the lighting is like. You don't know if it's going to be really busy. Is it going to be quiet? Did you need to book beforehand? Um, you know, all of these things can just cause worry over nothing. Whereas if you do go check out the venue beforehand, have a look around, maybe even going up to the bar staff and asking what kind of drinks um, uh, that they recommend, whether it be cocktails or wines or whatever, um, and say, look, you're going to be bringing a date here and you, uh, you want to make sure that your date has a great experience and what can they recommend? Uh, some places, usually if you're really nice to the staff, they'll actually reserve some of the best tables for you, which I know has happened to me in the past, where if I've gone in somewhere new, uh, because it's been on my list of places to maybe go and try out, but I don't know what to expect, and I do want the evening to go smoothly. I don't want to embarrass myself by, you know, going to the bar and then finding, like, we got a really terrible seat uh, or really terrible table, um, the drinks were awful and stuff, you know, there is nothing wrong with testing a place before you do end up going um, and even just checking in with the staff as well on like their recommendations and stuff because it will only give you brownie points with your date anyway um, if uh, all goes really, really well. Um, so that is essentially my five points for you. Um, so just recapping on them, meditate first of all. So just take the opportunity to do some kind of uh, mindfulness meditation, something that just allows you to just sit and be present in the moment, distract yourself from thinking about anything in the future or certainly in the past. Uh, if that doesn't work, absolutely something like the eye movement therapy can really help to remove any past bad experiences that maybe you've gone through. Uh, the next thing is listen to music. Don't make the mistake of listening to like really high energetic music. You don't need to be pumped for a day. It's more about relaxing the nerves by going for more calmer, soothing music, whether it be jazz music, orchestrated music, whatever, but just something that's going to soothe you rather than get the adrenaline pumping and get you going like, like yes, you know. However much you probably are looking forward to, to going on your date. Uh, the next one was watch something funny. So you can shift those negative emotions that you're going through in that moment by watching something that is going to influence you very naturally into something that's going to be a lot happier and, um, and a lot more positive as well. Um, the next one, take deep breaths. So if you find as well that you are still struggling with the nerves, pacing your breathing, causing your heart rate to drop and go back to a very normal pace is also going to be a way to get that cortisol to go back to a normal level. Um, I actually also like doing the, uh, the Wim Hof meditation, which you can't really do on your way to a date. Uh, it is something that I like to do very regularly on a daily basis. And I just find that Throughout my days, it just relaxes me, um, even if a stressful situation might come up. Um, and then lastly, plan and prep your evening. So check out venues, get 
an idea of things that you can be doing that can make sure that the date goes as smoothly as possible. And in fact, whilst I think about it, even having an idea of what conversations you want to have about the person. Um, if you've uh, certainly had the back and forth conversations, whether it be through like texting or through a social event or whatever, you're going to get a better sense of who the person is. Hopefully you found out a little bit about them that is going to give you an opportunity maybe to just do a bit of research. So when it comes to asking them about the uh, the things that they have an interest in, you know, you've got in mind some stuff that you can ask that just allows you to show some interest and curiosity in what they're doing and yeah, and, and what they enjoy doing and what they have their fascinations and hobbies in. So I hope this video was helpful for you. And uh, if you can like this video, certainly I would love to hear what you do to calm the nerves before you um, before you do want to go on a date. And if you can, please do keep it PG. I, I really don't want to hear if people end up like masturbating or if they are doing drugs or something like that. Let's keep it as clean as we possibly can. Um, but I would love to hear what you do. And also if you have any recommendations of videos that you would love for me to make that is only going to help you with uh, working on your anxiety, building your confidence, and hopefully getting on you more dates, um, whatever that can look like to you. Um, so subscribe and look forward to more videos coming out in future.